the body has tens of thousands of interesting proteins. Some are big, some are small, some complex, some simply folded. But one protein family is so basic, so fundamental, that it stood out to me. I'm talking about carbonic anhydrases. Why are these proteins so important? Carbonic anhydrases catalyze the interconversion between carbon dioxide and HCO3-. Though this reaction seems simple, it's necessary for tear formation, digestion, and pretty much every bodily process in between. Carbonic anhydrases play a big role in cellular respiration. CO2 produced in the mitochondria diffuses into a red blood cell where carbonic anhydrase quickly hydrates it into H2CO3 before it continues on its journey in the bloodstream. The conversion to bicarbonate, followed by bicarbonate's rapid decomposition into a bicarbonate anion with H+, keeps the concentration gradient of CO2 between the red blood cells and their surrounding buffer favorable. This allows red blood cells continued uptake of CO2. Once the red blood cell reaches the lungs, carbonic anhydrase dehydrates HCO3- into CO2 so it can be exhaled. Let's focus on a carbonic anhydrase that's specific to humans. Carbonic anhydrase 2, or simply CA2. Like all carbonic anhydrases, it hydrates carbon dioxide to HCO3-. What you may not know is that this inner conversion promotes large multinuclear bone cells in your body to differentiate into mature osteoclasts. These cells are responsible for breaking down bone to release the bone's minerals into the blood, a process called bone resorption. Mutations that inhibit CA2 from properly hydrating CO2 into bicarbonate prevent osteoclasts from resorbing bone. This causes a person to develop osteopetrosis, a disease characterized by anemia and unusually dense bones that are vulnerable to fracture. Looking at ca 2 structure allows us to understand how it operates. CA2 is a zinc metalloenzyme consisting of 11 beta sheets and 6 helices. Zinc is the rainbow ball at the center of the molecule. It forms coordination bonds with the three surrounding histidine residues, Hist94, 96, and 119. These basic polar residues create a perfect pocket for water to enter the active site and bind to zinc, occupying zinc's final coordination site. There are four basic steps to understanding the mechanism by which the enzyme catalyzes the water molecule's attack on carbon dioxide. First, the water loses a proton, generating a zinc-bound hydroxide ion. Second, carbon dioxide binds the active site, which positions it perfectly to interact with the hydroxide ion. The ion attacks CO2, converting it into a bicarbonate ion. Finally, a second molecule of water enters the active site, displacing bicarbonate and starting the process over again. This leaves us with two questions. What causes this proton to leave? And two, where does it go? Let's take a stab at the first question. We know the body functions at a pH of around seven. And if you learned anything in this class, you know that histidine also has a pKa around seven. It doesn't take much to put together the hypothesis that one of the three surrounding histidine side chains strips water of its proton to generate the hydroxide ion. However, this is not the case. In fact, evidence indicates that water simply releases the hydrogen. While normally water has a pKa of about 15.7, the pKa drops to actually 7 after binding to zinc. This makes the proton acidic and allows for it to be easily released. So once released, where does this proton go? Well, CA2 actually evolved a shuttle to take a proton from the active site to the exterior of the enzyme. This involves a fourth histine, histidine residue, His64. His64 catches the proton released from the zinc-bound water. The resulting positive charge in the residue is stabilized between the two nitrogens on its imidazole ring. His64 then transfers the proton to the protein exterior, where it is eventually picked up by the surrounding buffer. This returns His64 to its natural state, so it is ready to pick up another proton. So what did we learn? Carbonic anhydrases are zinc metalloenzymes which catalyze the interconversion between CO2 and HCO3-. This function is necessary for a slew of metabolic processes, especially cellular respiration and bone resorption. Mutations in these enzymes can cause some big problems, but when they work properly, they have a pretty elegant way of taking advantage of the body's natural pH to transfer protons. I hope you enjoyed this presentation on carbonic anhydrases.
before it continues on its journey in the bloodstream. The conversion to bicarbonate, followed by bicarbonate's rapid decomposition into a bicarbonate anion with H+, 